it's selective traditionalness. Yeah, it's like selective traditionalness, and it's also selective conditional femininity. Femininity. You you can't. So, you're either you're feminine or you're not. Or you're not. Facts. That's facts. I can't turn my masculinity off. You can't turn your femininity off. That's facts. So the question we had on the the video before this was how how can a man incorporate some unpredictability without the drastic character change? I think so. There's a video Kevin Samuels made recently that I I was happy about and um, saddened by at the same time. So the video he made was about if he was, I think it was like 20 to 30 yeah, or something. Yeah. You've seen that? Yeah. So he was talking about like what he would do and how he would move and how he would position himself, this and that. He would get his wolf pack, the whole nine. But the the what made me sad was at the end, the dude started calling in. And literally 90% of the dudes who called had no sense of the they were they were wanting him to tell them what to do. I I I yeah, that was a recent live, correct? That was recent. Yes. And what, what made me sad about that is, and he made a fantastic point. He said that if you're lost in my neighborhood and you're trying to get and you don't know, but you don't know where you're trying to get, how can I direct you? You're trying to get to the McDonald's around the corner. You're trying to get back to the highway. You're trying to get to the hospital. Like, where am I directing you to? You have to first know where you want to go. And a lot of men right now are lost. So to answer your question, you have to first fall in love with the version of man that you want to become before you can expect a young lady to fall in love with you. Like a lot of men try to put the cart before the horse. So it's like, and I tell women now, I'm not the man I want to be for me. So I can't be the man you want me to be for you. Now, if you always play that game and you're like, well, I'm going to, you know, I want a woman to validate my feelings or so I don't feel alone. You'll always be alone. Your feelings will never be validated. You're pouring water into a basket. So start with identifying and cultivating, literally carving out the image of the man you want to be. And then you can invite a young lady. Because if you don't, if you do it the other way, she's going to try to carve you. So so what if the, the man believes that, okay, the, the best version of myself is this nice guy? Mm -hmm. And they feel like, you know, nice people are of, are of high character. Mm -hmm. Then why would I, you know, change who I am? So boom, perfect. There is a distinction between nice and kind. Nobody should want to be nice. Nice is disingenuous. Nice is unsustainable. You should strive to be kind. The difference is a kind person does what's in the best interest of you, them, and the collective. A nice person does what's in the best interest of you. So uh, there, there, was a, there was an interesting article. Uh, it was like a think piece re, re, uh, written a while back. I can't remember what it's called, but um, it... it uh, it was somewhere along the lines of the problem with stupid people. And it didn't define stupidity by like degrees or accolades. So it was making the case that you can be a, an astrophysicist and be stupid. You can be a Nobel prize winner and be stupid. And stupid based on that article was saying that if you engage in win-win um, interaction. So something good from, comes out of this for me, something good comes out of this for you, you're a, you're a wise person. If you engage in win-lose situations where something bad, uh, uh, or I don't gain anything, but you gain everything, you're a victim, right? So nice people are in that realm. If you engage in win-lose where something's good for me, something's bad for you, then you are, you're like a thief. You know what I'm saying? You're like a, you know, you're a bandit, right? But some people, and these are the stupid people, they engage in interactions where it's lose-lose. I don't gain anything from it. You don't gain anything from it. So in the dynamic of male-female, the problem with niceness is a man is supposed to be the leader. 
A man is supposed to be the, the, the stick in the ground. A man is supposed to be like the unshakable force, the, the, the paragon of strength. So if you are so easily swayed, like where does it stop? Are you going to mortgage your kids because you're trying to be nice to the neighbor? Are you going to, you know what I'm saying? Just, just let something happen because you're trying to be the nice. So it's unsustainable. So nice should never be anybody's goal. And then if, if it is your goal, I would say reevaluate what nice is. And if you still want to be nice, then just know that you're going to, Kevin say, you're going to die alone. <laughs> buy a dog and die alone. You buy, listen, buy a cat. If you do, again, buy a cat and die alone. Buy a hamster. <laughs> that's what it is that's what it is what would you say is the the top three lessons no 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 no. what would you say the top three things that black men that black women want from black men throughout all your research and vice versa so black women <clears throat> first and foremost it's safety it's um Security. Now, for for unhealthy black women, they understand that as somebody who's you know who's with the shits and who can pop off and who can shoot and fight and all that good stuff. For healthy black women, it's more about financial stability. It's more about decision making. It's more about leadership. Um, yeah, leadership again, forward thinking, foresight. It's about those things, right? Decisiveness, decision maker. So, so that's the first thing, um, and I guess provision wraps into that. Um, uh, a friend of mine was saying the other day, because of our society right now for black women, um, sex is a huge piece. You know, you got to be able to put it down in the bedroom. Kept talking right? about that, too. Facts. Facts. So so that in a nutshell, that's what women are looking for, man. They're, that's what they, they'll tell you. Oh, you got to be six, five. You got to be this, this and that. All that is bullshit. They will make concessions for a man that makes them feel safe and makes them feel seen. If you're the person she's making rules for, as opposed to breaking rules for, but just hang it up, you lost, right? Excellent. So, exactly. So on the flip side. Wait, so I'm sorry for? to cut you off. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, I'm sorry. So you said you said security, provision, and throwing it down in the bedroom? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, so and really I would, I would just boil all that into safety. And I'll, I'll boil that down to safety. And, and to be seen. Mm-hmm. What about vice versa for black men? That's tough. So, you know, I'm, I'm a black man. I talk to black men. We interview black men. Um, for us, we just want to be respected. Plain and okay, simple. Well, that, that wraps it up, right? <laughs> All right, right. Men, men, men just want men, men just want to be respected and appreciated. Like what, what was a there's a TikTok trend going on that I thought was interesting, and I actually sent it to women. It's um, it'll be like the caption would say, My wife is mad at me. So I'm going around the house tightening all the lids and putting things where she can't reach it and stuff like that. That is a very when you study psychology, that's a very primitive thing. Men need to feel necessary. Mm. part of the reason our community is failing so much is the paradigm is men are not necessary black men in particular are not necessary we don't need you for nothing now that goes back and part of the making a black woman feel seen is you have to understand context that goes back to slavery that goes back to jim crow that goes back to segregation all those mass incarceration all those things were systemically done to make the black woman feel like she doesn't need a man. So you have to understand the context to then begin to dismantle it. So I say all the time to men, like you have to have, white people say, have your finger on the pulse. You have to know what's going on, your ears on the ground. You understand what I'm saying? So like men just want to feel necessary. That's it. So how does, it's tough to make a relationship work when the woman wants to be seen and then the man wants to feel necessary because again that's a fine line because if i'm going above and beyond to make sure my woman feels seen you know and i take a background role i'm not going to feel as necessary no 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 i don't i don't mean feel seen from a um from a red carpet standpoint i mean feel right. seen like you know that lma song love me naked like no, feel like feel <laughs> Well, you know, but feel seen on an emotional level. Like you understand why I'm like this. 
You understand that I was molested at five years old. You understand that I've been with bum dudes. You under like feel seen in that way. Exactly. So it's not like you know when Will Smith was doing this shit when she was on the red carpet. Yeah. He was like, no, not that. No, no, no. Okay. Don't do that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> I, they they want to feel like okay that you care about their emotions. It's it's kind of like a, a like understanding and and uh, comprehension because everybody everybody does not understand or or every I think comprehension is something that's not uh, that not a lot of people have um surprisingly you, you think that would that would be a thing but i i think um like what you said to where people a lot of people are stupid even in that sense to where it's like a lot of people they don't have the awareness to know or see that there's something wrong or somebody needs to be heard especially your significant other a lot of people don't really have that wisdom or discernment to to see that there's you know something there which which is crazy i think it's uh either you really have it or you don't because everyone is not that uh attentive to mm-hmm. their their counterpart so it's like a lot of things go over our heads and stuff like that um I yeah think that's an issue that i have i can come off as really cold to women so i don't express men in general we don't express our emotions in the same way so I can seem rather dismissive over their emotions. Yeah. Because it's like, you know, when we go through something, you feel me, we just wear it on the chin and we get over it. But for for her, her emotional process goes a lot differently. So I can come off as I don't really care, you know. So I, I understand where they're coming from. Yeah. So and and what what's ironic, I'm the same exact way, dog. Like, but what, what, <laughs> every girl was right. saying nonchalant to the girl. Nonchalant, <laughs> cold. I've been called all that. But mm-hmm. what, what I learned, though, that I guess changed my perspective a bit. So part of the reason women care so much about the group, and like you'll see in some of the comments on my video, they're like, she's bending herself in pretzels to stick to girl code. Women are socialized to care about the group because from an evolutionary standpoint, most women did, could not survive without the group. Okay. Right. So so it's ingrained in their DNA to to prioritize the group, the collective, whereas men, for all intents and purposes, we got some lone wolves, you know, the alpha sigmas, male t- uh, our archetypes like we, we have people like so may, men aren't as um, they're not as uh, concerned with the group. And, and with that being said, they're not as in tune with like if a group of girls spend enough time around each other, their periods sync up. Like that's real. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's real shit. That, I, I, I knew, I, I've actually noticed that in a few girls. Mm-hmm. But like this is yo, like my time once coming around. It's like, oh, my time. Runs. That's interesting. Wow. I absolutely. never knew that was like a thing. I thought it was a coincidence. No, it's absolutely, it's absolutely a thing. But the reason I bring that up is there's something I'm really interested in. It's called epigenetics. And epigenetics, in a nutshell, is genetic memory. So let's say something happened to great, 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 great grandma. It's that trauma is passed down for generations, literally, right? Now put it in the context of black woman, slavery, Jim Crow, segregation, lynching, all that stuff. You have to realize there are some concessions you have to make. There is a level of grace that's necessary. Now I preach grace on both sides because like I said in one of my videos, White supremacy tried to convince black men that they were impotent, that they were unnecessary, that they were weak, that they were less than men. White supremacy tried to convince women that they were not beautiful, that they were not worth love, that they were only as good as their bodies, that they were only, you know what I'm saying, bed winches. You fast forward to 2022, like, Shahrazad Ali is the GOAT. Whatever the female version of a GOAT is, she is the GOAT because she's been talking about this since 1989. Like, but you would think she said it yesterday. So as a man, you have to be conscious of that context and you have to approach your female counterpart with grace. As a woman, she has to also be conscious of that uh, context and approach her male counterpart with a certain level of grace as well. 
Um, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. What do you, what do you think is the biggest thing that black men have to improve on? <sighs> Too many of us are emotional, man. Mm. Really? Absolutely. That's usually a phenomenon that that should not attach to black men. It's usually uh, when it comes to our emotions, we're we're out of touch. Well, so pseudo masculinity is feminine masculinity. Like the like the the the, the gorilla who feels like he got to beat his chest. He got to. Uh, that's 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 feminine, right? And the reason the reason for that is because a lot of black boys didn't grow up with men mm -hmm. around them. A lot of black boys grew up more so with female energy, right, around them. Mm -hmm. And if you're not careful of that, and, and, and Jason, um, I think his name is Jason Wilson. He wrote a book called Cry Like a Cry Like a Man. Dude's the goat, man. But yeah, if you're not that book, yeah. If you're not careful about that, um, it 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 manifests itself in not just self-destructive ways, but destructive ways in general. That's why, like most school shooters and things, are boys. You know, because men tend to lash because you, when you don't process your emotions properly, it comes out as fury, it comes out as anger, it comes out as chest beating. So we're too emotional, first of all. Um, and part of that, <laughs> part of that emotionalness is that we're not as pragmatic um, as we should be. Because the truth of the matter is like, some scientists have found out that testosterone rates are falling, sperm counts are falling. Maybe it's because of the plastic in our in our stuff or whatever the case may be. But like on a biological level, there has been a war against black people since time immemorial. And part of that war and part of the consequence of the war is there are no men to guide men into manhood anymore. So you have a lot of lost boys who are just doing the best that they can. And they might be six five with a full beard, but you're still you're still a woman for all intents and purposes. You don't know how to be a man, right? So it's 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 that's so that's number one, getting our, our, our emotions in check. And then number two, once your emotions are in check, get your priorities in order. A lot of a lot of dudes out here don't deserve. I can curse, right? <laughs> of course, they don't deserve pussy. If I'm being a hundred percent. A lot of dudes well, out here. What are the not characteristics of a man that does deserve it? Because you a know, man who doesn't, a, a man who doesn't prioritize it. Ooh, that's a bar. That's a bar. Because um, I think Kev, Kev, I said this even Hafiz. Um, you said a man that doesn't prioritize, like make sex a priority, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of men. So I think I, <laughs> sorry. A man that can control his sexual discipline is really a dangerous man. Facts. That is facts. It. And 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 women know that. I'm 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 gonna tell you like this. When I was in college, wow, and I went over to a to a young girl's place, and I went over, you know, with my condom ready and Man, I'm gonna do this, and then I'm gonna do that, and then I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna get in there. I was shooting maybe one for ten, but when I went over there on some like, let's just spend time. Yeah. Together. Let's chill. Mm -hmm. Exactly. When I'm, I'm just, I'm not even on that right now. She's grabbing on me. But yes. wait, but wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. At that point, though, did you get like four nuts off by that point, and you kind of. <laughs> It's not gonna be prioritized when you six nuts in, you know. <laughs> exactly, so and, and you know that that's 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 part of what's what's um what's kind of fucked up about uh nature because as men age, we lose testosterone. Testosterone governs sex drive. Mm -hmm. So as men become more sexy, we want sex less. But when I was eighteen and I didn't have shit, mm -hmm. I was fucking nah, you know what I'm saying. So that's the that's the catch twenty two. But the trick is for all the young dudes. The trick is if you prioritize. I'm gonna put it like this: this this ain't my game. This is uh, brother polite, but I thought it was brilliant. He said, "Since the beginning of time, three types of men have always been successful with women." He said, "The preacher, <laughs> the teacher, 
and the gangster. These three archetypes of men have always been successful with women. He said, why have these men been successful with women? The preacher prioritizes God above all else. So you woman come second or third to God. The teacher prioritizes ethics, education, principle, research College. above all else. You woman come second, third to that. The gangster is money over bitches. He prioritizes his money. And that's why preachers, teachers, and gangsters have always been successful with women. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but you can't, you can't put a woman first. Because once you see that, he knows that, it's really, it's pretty much Who does over she want to be first? You, well, you don't figure out what you want for yourself. Bro, like what you say, a lot of the things that they say they want, bro, it's pretty much nonsense, to be honest. Let's be honest. Thanks. You know, that's they why. Be first. Like Kevin says, they don't want the pressure of being the main priority. No, of course. Because the thing is, it's like what Chloe Bailey said. And and people people was tripping over it, but, but even a woman like her, she don't want you picking up her phone all the time. She wants to know that okay, you're out here getting money, you're out here you're doing busy. something. Right. It's your purpose. It's your purpose first. I'm they respect. You. They love the grind. They love the hunger. You ask a lot of mission. What do you want in the man? Ambition, 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 ambition. Not really caring mm -hmm. what God. That's as long as he's ambitious. Talk. The, the, the problem is a lot of times we when we listen to women, especially like in the whole manosphere space, we listen to retort instead of listening to understand. So I implore all men to literally be investigators, literally be psychologists. So, for example, the Chloe Bailey thing, a lot of dudes heard that and was like, man, what's wrong with her? This and that, this and that. But if you really sit down understood it, and you draw it out and you make the math make sense, it makes all the sense in the world. Because if I'm going to lead you, I have to prioritize something else. There has to be a North Star for me, for you to follow me to that North Star. Exactly. I'll be, I be telling people, I'll be telling my homies, listen, your time is money. That's currency to a woman. Thanks. Do not give it out free. It don't work that way. I'll call you when I'm free. We work around my schedule. I don't just have time to be laying, kicking it with you. No. I'll make time. I'll let you know if I got time for you or not, because it's a money, it, it, it don't work that way. Okay. You know, it's not, it shouldn't be free whatsoever. My, my boy kicked the ball to me the other day. He was like, you know, the reality is, you know, when people say women create life, the only thing that's alive in that equation is the sperm. An egg is dead. An egg is what incubates the sperm, but the only thing swimming, the only thing moving around that's a life full of life is the sperm. And that's part of the reason why when a woman ejaculates, she's ready to go again, 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 again. When a man ejaculates, he is drained. We have a refractory period. I just gave you my energy from my brain and I need to rest now. I literally need to rest now. So there is a, there is a level of now, the extreme is the fresh and fit where it's like, you know what I'm saying? I'm the prize, this and that. But there is a level of, you have to understand your self-worth. You have to understand your value. Even the process of sex, it's not, you're giving her energy. She is taking your energy. Like you watch two people after they just had sex. The woman is energy, if it, if it went right, the woman is energized, the man is depleted. She is sorry, taking your energy. So you have to be, on your shit that's it give her something to respect um build the life that where, she wants to be a part of where would you classify yourself would you classify yourself as a with this alpha beta male convert conversation mm -hmm. like so, alpha, what's that what's the name alpha strategies alpha male alpha strategy. male strategy ams yeah yeah i've i've, I've watched uh like one of his videos i don't like his personality type so i couldn't really stay stay watching his videos. I, I like that though because i kind of listen to all of them so i kind of get mm -hmm. you know and i try to be empathetic as well so exactly so like, like when i listened to him it was more so from a scientific place it wasn't like you know like somebody i appreciate hafiz i appreciate mtr i appreciate um poor man podcast i appreciate because they they seem to be more level-headed whereas alpha male strategies and like the fresh and fit it's like 
here's how you treat these bitches. Like, it's, it's more so that here's how you get them. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, so with the whole alpha thing, first of all, I've had so many arguments with women about the whole alpha thing. You have no idea. Because I tell them, based on biology, if you met an actual alpha, you would think he was obnoxious. Because even the, the concept of alphaness is the man who walks in the room and look at me. That is the concept. Now, it is a certain archetype, it's a certain personality type. It, it tends to be successful. But I've never idealized that personality type because I don't want attention. The only reason I'm doing this podcast with y'all, the only reason I've done any other interview is to move the bigger conversation forward. But I don't want to be in front of the camera for real. I, want, I, I always said I want to be the dude who, when I walk in a room, only the nerds know who he is. Like the nerds in the corner whispering amongst themselves. But I don't want to walk in everybody. I don't want that. You know, so I don't consider myself alpha. I never wanted to be alpha. I know some alphas. I tend to not like them niggas, but, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? They, when I talk, they listen. So I don't know okay. what arc is. I know now it's Omega, uh, uh, Sigma, Theta. I don't know, but I know I'm not, I'm not interested in alpha. When, when I get that question, I'm like, listen, I'm glass. Like that's, <laughs> I, I, really, like, I don't, I don't like Facts. to classify myself. And, and you know, a lot of people claim that they alpha and they not. And it's just I don't right. want to be associated or confined to a group. So I'm like I'm just I'm just myself, man. You determine what real, I am. Real real alphas are usually not intelligent enough to know that they're alphas. <laughs> they're just the obnoxious guy, the 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 big dude on the football team who just loud. Yeah. You know, I'm just loud. But the ones who do tend to be sociopaths. So the you gotta be careful. With the, so I'm <laughs> not interested. I'm not interested in none of that, man. Oh, collar pull. Are you in a relationship? You said what? Are you in a relationship? In a what? A relationship. Oh no, man. I'm single. I'm single. I'm I'm gotcha. grinding, man. So what would you say to someone who comes across your content and they're like, well, he's not even in a relationship? Because you know Kevin Samuels got the same backlash. Well, he's been divorced twice. So right. so for people who are who are out there trying to discredit you, what would what would you say to that? I am first and foremost, and you can call me an archaeologist, right? So I'm on the psychological, sociological, scientific aspect of things. Um, and I believe that before relationship can even happen, communication must happen. And after communication, comprehension must happen. So I'm helping people do that. Now, what they do with these tools that I give them, whether they get into a relationship or they just have better relationships with women is up to them. Um, but to discredit, because I'm not, I've been in relationships, <laughs> you know, I have a child, <laughs> you know, but I don't, I, don't, I don't think that makes, I don't think that piece makes me any more or less qualified to speak to it. I mean, I've interviewed people who are married. I mean, I've interviewed people who are divorced. I've interviewed people who are single, uh, young people, old people, that is my competitive edge is that talking to people. So it's not about my perspective and my whatever I'm pre like, even when we interview dudes, I'm not the one behind the camera. It's a female voice behind the camera. Right. So it's more about the conversation as opposed to me sitting in front of the camera and preaching anything. I'm not preaching anything. I just want black people to get together. We got you. Do you think black women in general are receptive to your message? I think they want to be. The reason <laughs> I say that, steps, though, there's baby steps. Yeah, I, the reason I say that is because we're in a very tricky place in society right now, and part of what happened is we we convince women that they can have it all. They can have the CEO who has all the time in the world for her. They can have the romantic guy who also makes a whole bunch of money and is always available and things like that. They feel like they can have it all. And what it's created is, is this energy that she can, actually, she can actually never be satisfied, right? So women who've seen past that, you know, that veil 
um, and are more practical in their desires, I think they're going to take to it. But women who still want to wait for Superman, uh, episode 17, um, eventually, life will humble you. Life will humble you at some point. But, but, but the issue I take with that is, I agree with what you said, life will humble you, but... Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, women they get humble at like forty, and then by then it's too late. Yeah, and now you have a potential family, black family that was lost. Right. And, it seems and, and like you, no, and go it ahead. I'm sorry. Like that, that being being focused on being single is not building our community. Mm. So every every time I see a forty year old woman who's you know bitter and who's uh, disagreeable and lonely. Mm. I get upset because I'm like, damn, if you would just, you know, tone it down just a little bit, we could have had another black family here. I mean, Harriet Tubman knew that you can't save everybody. You, you, you can't, you, what did she say? You can't, it, the hardest somebody. thing was convincing people they were slaves or something like that. Like you can't save everybody. And I've made, I've made peace with that. I've come to terms with that. Again, what, what my platform serves to do is create a library. For people who are seeking out, so for men who are seeking out, how do I talk to women? I'm gonna show you in real time. We're not gonna talk about talking to women. I'm gonna talk to women, you know. And part of what you realize is that they're people. They're just as flawed. She look good. She just as flawed. Just as stupid. Just as ignorant. Just as everything as a person, right? And for women, also, here's a, here's a, a peek into. Um, how the world works. Now, one of the people I interviewed recently, I'm really excited about that. He's one of my boys. He's got like 620K on Instagram. Nice. So he's that guy. Well, he's he that do? guy. Huh? What does he do? Um, he does content, man. He's just a content creator, right? And he his audience is actually 90% female. So me and him chop it up <laughs> and he puts me on game. You know, I talked to him, put him on game. But at the end of the day, like, he also recognizes that a lot of these women are delusional. And yeah. when, you see the, when you see the episode, he'll actually, like, talk about some of the ways that women are delusional. And he might low-key disenfranchise his own audience. But, like, I think Black men have to commit ourselves to leading, um, leading our community to the promised land. It all starts with us. It all starts with us. With Stop. Leader incentivizing these dumb these dumb bras to to have all the audacity that they have for real you see what i'm saying like you'll have somebody come on fresh and fit for instance and just be useless and talk all kinds of nonsense and then her only fans goes up by twenty thousand the next day we're the problem and i i mentioned this to some of the guys that i speak because you know i've, I've definitely been there you know i've been I, I am a part of the problem right and uh this is why so many fives and sixes can talk like they're nines and tens because they know at the end of the day that there's countless men that approach them in person. Facts. Their DMs are flooded in Facebook, Facts. Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and they get constant male validation that they don't have to work for. Mm. This is why so many women like that feel they have such an inflated sense of self. Yeah. Um, so again, like, and I've been there. You know, I've, I've talked a few fives up my, myself, so I get it. I definitely, I gotta, I gotta, I definitely, I have to break out of that habit for sure. Listen, what, one of the things I'm really proud of now in my life is, um, so, you know, a lot of us, we have to, you know, take some liquid courage before we can, you know, be lively at an, at a function or whatever the case may be. I've gotten to the point now that I can fake that. I can fake being tipsy and be, be, be on some water, right? And the reason I bring that up is maturity as a man is being able to fake post-nut clarity. That's the bar. And you know you know what Fresh and, Myron from Fresh and Fish said? He said, women, they walk around with post-nut clarity 24-7. Facts, facts. Because it works it, it works in the opposite for them. Yeah. It works in the opposite for you can You can get a girl digmatized. So right. we, the, 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 the haze happens afterwards. Whereas for you, you walk around in the haze. Right. So so after the nut, we're relaxed. You come to our senses. For her, it just begun. <laughs> right. You right. just transfer the haze to her. That's that's real, real interesting. Which is better effective? Which is more effective? 
What do you mean? Yeah, it depends on the person. With post nut clarity, no, you said giving the haze to them because uh, they walk around in it while us, it doesn't happen until we actually nut. So which is which is better in the long run? I think the men who aren't guided by their pre-nut haze, that's better in the long run. Because both the women who, either the women who get the haze after sex or the man who has the haze before sex, both of them lose ultimately. I think, I think when it comes to men too, a lot of men who, because we all know like there's a certain pool of men that didn't really have to work hard to get uh, female attention. Mm -hmm. and they got the women relatively easy. The vast majority of men don't fall under that umbrella. So I mm -hmm. think, you know, as time progresses and men learn, learn more about women and they have more access to women, they feel like they're kind of like chasing numbers now, mm -hmm. you know, that they, they're more suited to get more women. So now they're kind of just in an endless you know, hamster race to Thanks. get as many, as many bodies as they can because, you know, they friend that, that, graduated with 40. So now they're at 22 and they still trying to <laughs> get that experience. Listen, and, and when you do it, you realize it ain't it ain't shit. It really ain't nothing. And and what what you actually realize is you miss you miss what happened how you were beforehand. You miss you miss the magic. Yo. I was telling my boy the other day, like, yo, I miss the magic. And not just like from fucking a bunch of girls, but not just. For me, having a bunch of conversations with women has killed the magic. That's and I miss I, I miss when I thought they were magical. That's it. Honestly, honestly, when I was a virgin, I I can't I cared a lot more about women. <laughs> Looking back at it, when I was, I was like, you know, trying to get to know them, you know, trying to wow, that's very interesting, man. Because I mean sex, up. sex is just another form of communication. Okay. So, so I, yeah, I'm, you know, I do what I do, but I, I have communi I communicate with women, you know, and, and what you realize is we are, we continuously move the goalposts for ourselves. And this is a bigger life conversation. Uh, there's something called the hedonic treadmill or hedonic adaptation. Like we, whenever our brain is wired to reset itself constantly. Mm -hmm and reset itself to a relatively stable level of happiness, right? So for mm -hmm. instance, I was telling my boy the other day, I want a Mercedes GT or a Mercedes EQS. Those EQSs that just dropped are fucking sexy. Now, if I get that car for the first week, for the first month, man, I'm gonna be on cloud nine. But what's so messed up about the brain is after a while, it resets itself and comes back down off that high. And that EQS is just a car to me now. So the same thing with all the men thinking about, oh, when I'm able to get all kinds of bitches and this and this is that. Yeah, at, at first, it'll be like, damn, it's amazing. But after a while, you realize that you're back to, damn, now I need more bitches. Now I need more. You're, you're just pouring shit into a, a bottomless pit. And you realize that, man, I don't, I don't even like myself anymore. Because part of that post-nut clarity is you get disgusted. <laughs> you get disgusted with like, what? What did I do that for? For real. What if I fucking around and get this bitch pregnant? What if, what if I got it? Now Drake has to put hot sauce and condoms. Like if I ever get to the point I gotta put hot sauce and condoms, I don't even want it no more, bro. Kevin, Kevin talks about like how it's reckless, you know? chasing all these women, every time you do, you're risking an STD, you're risking pregnancy. And he said, all, all for what? It's not, oh, it's not that human lit. Human nature is we gotta find out ourselves. That's it's human nature. Not that lit. I'm gonna I'm I'm say, say this to the young dudes, like sometimes when, when you, real niggas know when you really get it like that, sometimes you'd rather just beat your beat. That's a fact. Sometimes you rather just beat your meat, like honestly, you know, and not saying that women aren't amazing and all that, but like, don't overhype the thing where it becomes something else. It's not that deep. It's really, really niggas who really get pussy, they know it's not that deep at all. It's not, nothing's gonna happen. Nothing's gonna change. You don't get any more brownie points. You actually lose money from your bank account. You don't gain money, like nothing happens. So focus on the reason 
why your name is going to be remembered when you leave this world. The woman will be a consequence of that. A distraction. Facts. The bar. Oh my goodness. You're going to help so many people, man. Last question. Yeah. If you could have dinner with five people dead or alive, who would it be? Um, I discovered this dude, um, his name is Alan de Barton. He talks about like romance and love and things like that. So he would be at that table. Cornell West is the goat. He'll be at that table. Ava DuVernay, she's the goat as far as filmmaking. she will be at that table. Like all poets, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ava DuVernay. Um, Marcus Garvey. Mmm, that's a bar. I, 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 good. Last but not least. Hmm. I really, I really have a deep appreciation for, for Louis Farrakhan. I don't know who Farrakhan that. would be. Ah, oh, no, 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 Shahrazad. I'm sorry. Shahrazad Ali. I already name dropped it. Shahrazad Ali. Got you. Yeah, yeah. When it comes to Marcus Garvey, someone mentioned how like he did a lot for black people and they almost virtually erased him from the history books. Like the most out of any like uh, black public figure or black activist, they erased him the most from history. I heard he was trying to start his own currency. I heard he was, he was trying to get a boat to get us out of here. I heard all mm -hmm. that and like nobody mm -hmm. really knows who he is. and. I hear like he had like almost like a similar impact of a, a Malcolm X or MLK, but no one really knows. There, there is no Malcolm X or MLK without Marcus Garvey. Mm. There is no, there is no Louis Farrakhan. There is no uh, Elijah Muhammad, because mm. what he did is he established a certain consciousness, right? One of one of the most important. So the both thing, the biggest impact with the both thing is. It told people that black men can have audacity. Mm. Like this nigga gonna get a boat. The second thing is, you know, one, one of the big things he did, he started a, a company that printed uh, or that created dolls, black baby dolls for mm. little girls. That's huge. Because he was trying to, and he understood that it's all about paradigm shifting. He was trying to shift the paradigm to tell these little girls, you are beautiful. You are the standard. One of the documentaries I was watching of Marcus Garvey, um, they were interviewing somebody who, uh, her great grandfather, grandfather was a Garveyite back in the day. And she was like, yeah, my, my, my grandfather was a, was a janitor. But whenever he came home, he couldn't wait to go in the room and throw on his, his Garvey suit because he could stand up straight and feel like somebody. Mm, that's major. That's deep. Especially, especially back then where black people were virtually deemed as useless to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. I got looking. And he's Jamaican. I'm Jamaican. So I got looking at that. And he's Jamaican. So and and you know, in, in Nigeria, um, there's a big, you know, the Biafran War was a big part of our history. And the uh Biafran flag was actually inspired by the Pan-Africanist flag um that Marcus Garvey mm. uh, put behind. So there, there's a there's a um uh, Pan-African link, you know, with, with him as well. So obviously they took him out of the history books. <laughs> that nigga was dangerous. <laughs> that nigga was dangerous. You hear me? Paul, you got are, you, oh, go are, you, are you spiritual at all? <sighs> yes and no. So I grew up Christian. Um, one of the films I'm working on is actually called Christian by Default, <laughs> because I, I want to I want to explore that concept because I'm, I'm one of those people that I recognize that the truth is the reason a lot of people are Christian and Muslim is just because their parents were. And, and the, the reason they stay that is just because I don't want to be wrong. And like God is like, why weren't you this? You know what I'm saying? So um, for me, I really want to explore it. I really would not necessarily explore a bunch of religions, but I want to be Christian because I'm Christian, not out of fear, mm -hmm. not out of anxiety, not out of some kind of um, obligation, right? So that's where I'm at. A lot of people are Christian just in case. Yeah. Like Boom. just in case he's real, just in case there is a hell, I got to stay 
enough Christian to get in. Facts. So facts. facts. That is very true. Well, good. You had mentioned Elijah Muhammad and Louis Farrakhan, which is very interesting. I have a lot of mixed emotions when it comes to that. Of course, much respect, especially for Louis Farrakhan. Um, Elijah Muhammad kind of, kind of mixed of emotions, especially when it comes to uh, nation of Islam and the things that happened within it. But I guess that's a conversation for another time. <laughs> yeah, cool. yeah. I'm not. I'm not even Muslim, but I, I'll say this: they did something right. Because if you see if you see a black person, black man or woman from the nation of Islam, their skin looks different. Their 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 spine is straighter. Like so, they're pretty they peaceful. Some, they're not gonna lie. Right. They're pretty peaceful. Not gonna lie. Like they they, they, they the tone is like my brother. And it's one band, one sound. It's one band, one sound with them. For real. Well, structure, order. Exactly. Well. Uh, his YouTube will be in the description and you guys please subscribe because 90% of you guys watch my stuff but don't subscribe, that's lame. <laughs>